The following is a Cruisers Motorsports exclusive. What's up everybody? Skywarp72 here, and in various parties while playing Forza, I've noticed that a topic of discussion that always comes up is cars that were in previous Forzas that are no longer in either Motorsport or Horizon. Whether they were actually usable cars or just something fun to screw around in, the fact of the matter is that there are dozens of beloved cars from previous iterations of Forza that are no longer around for players to enjoy. So I threw up a poll in the Cruisers Gang Facebook group to see which ones are missed the most. For this list, I'm not including cars that I know are still going to make a comeback in Horizon 4, which includes cars like the Camaro IROC Z and uh, just a whole horde of Toyotas. And before we get started, check out the Cruisers Gaming Group on Facebook where this list was decided, and subscribe to the channel here for more Forza lists and shenanigans. Number 10, Your Mom. Wait a minute. Oh, very funny, guys! Number 10, Chrysler Crossfire. The Crossfire was the only performance-oriented offering from Chrysler since the Conquest in the 1980s. And just like the Conquest from the 80s, it was just a rebadged car from another company. So it was basically the Crossfire sitting on the Mercedes SLK platform. While its styling was questionable and very much a product of the turn of the century quo from Detroit, its playability in Forza Motorsport 4 made it an excellent B and A class car. Ford Pinto. Exploding gas tanks be damned, the Pinto was one fun car that I really miss from FM4. This car was a great competitor in C and B class with its lightweight and great balance. The Pinto gets its fame in the 1970s for a poorly mounted gas tank, which in a rear end collision could burst into flames. We kind of still have it as the 78 Ford Mustang II is technically the same platform, but we really miss the quirkiness of the Pinto. Chevy Cobalt SS By far the most capable front-wheel drive car to come out of GM stable was the Cobalt SS. I don't care, the Beretta was better looking. GM had previously made great handling front-wheel drive cars like the Beretta and the Olds Achieva SCX, though they had never had the power to really back the handling until the Cobalt SS. Using GM's Delta platform, which has its roots in the third generation Cavalier Z24 for some reason, GM left much of the Cavalier styling in it, and it always made me wonder why GM would drop the Cavalier nameplate and name a car the Cobalt, but yet make the Cobalt kind of look like a Cavalier if it had been redesigned. Ugh, typical GM thinking. Anyways, the last time we saw one was in the likes of Forza Motorsport 3. Saturn Redline. Ironic that these two would end up next to each other in this list because it sits on the same platform as the Cobalt SS. The Ion Redline was unique in its suicide door design and, like the Cobalt, was pretty useful for lower class racing in Forza. The Redline would make it as far as FM4 before it got the cut for FM5. The Smart Car. Obviously missed for just being a goofy car, the Smart 4.2 was an ultra-compact offering from Mercedes under the Smart brand, made in France. Popular for being a wheelie car in the game, the Forza Physics would treat this car like it treats the BMW Izetta or the Fiat 595. While a season tuner could make it competitive in a road race lobby, it spent most of its time in private lobbies on the Mulzane Strait doing silly stunts. Who knew such a disliked car in the real world would be missed by Forza fans so much? Pontiac Aztec The Aztec was just one surprise after another at FM6. <laughs> First surprise was that Forza even introduced it in a car pack. Uh, perhaps they were riding the whole Breaking Bad wave? <laughs> I don't know. The next surprise? 
was that with the proper tuning, it was an absolute blast as a lobby car. No, you weren't going to top any leaderboards with it, but in the hands of some capable players, you could really embarrass some other racers with it. Now the last surprise is that it was offered in FM6 and has never been in another Forza, which is weird because I think it would fit the vibe of Horizon. I wonder if they just caught too much crap about it from Forza players. I'm really surprised it's not higher on the list as myself and the rest of the cruisers would go into C-Class lobbies and just dominate, usually in Pontiac Aztecs for a while. Chevrolet C6 Corvette Grand Sport. Yet another car that quietly snuck below the missing in action radar cars from FM4, including my own radar, it was the C6 Corvette Grand Sport. At the time of FM4, it was the top of the line offering for Corvettes, which made sense that it was in the game. Since then though, it has quietly bowed out and left Corvette enthusiasts wanting it back in the game. Toyota Altezza. Taking a gamble and adding one Toyota to this list, the Altezza and Lexus IS200 may or may not be added at the rate that FH4 is throwing up free Toyota cars. Though it doesn't seem likely since they have been missing from the franchise for so long. These cars were wildly well capable cars for circuit, drifting, as much as they are in real life. Lending well to B and A class, Toyota fans are screaming for their return. DeLorean DMC-12 Despite the DeLorean's iconic 80s great looks and it being probably the most recognizable movie car of all time, it was a terrible car. Its performance numbers were dismal. Yet in Forza, since it was mid-engine with an LS motor swap in it, it could be a fire-breathing track car. That iconic 80s styling made it an absolute pleasure to see it ripping around a track, and the Forza Motorsport.net forums for years have been alive with fans asking for its return. Before we get to number one, a few honorable mentions for other cars that were put on the list. Voted top of the list by my fellow cruisers is the 2006 Pontiac GTO. Reviving the GTO nameplate gave Pontiac back some of its performance soul for the brand after GM had nixed the Firebird in 2002. Actually kind of a rebadge hole in Monero, the 06 Pontiac GTO was so good it was a leaderboard car in A-Class and FM4 and its drifting prowess was equally as on par. I saw some player groups have entire race series using the GTO. A longtime supporter of the channel, GTO Daddy, owns an 06, just like in the game, and it's been modified probably around A-class specs. Tell me, what do you guys think? Did we miss any cars? Tell me in the comments below! Join the Cruisers Gaming Facebook page and vote on the next fan voted list that I do. Subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up if you like this episode. Cruisers Vinyl Stickers are available at the Patreon page now, links to which will be at the end of the video and in the description down below. I thank you so much for watching my friends and remember, those friends, they're the family you get to choose. I'll see you next time fellow Cruisers.